Hey guys, if you're new to programming and you have decided to learn Python, then one of the first questions that you might be asking yourself is how to learn Python? That is, what are the different Python concepts that you need to learn? Also, depending on your field of interest, that is, if you want to learn Python for web development or for machine learning or for data science or automation or any other fields, you may have to learn some specific skill sets or specific concepts related to each of these fields. Now, as a beginner to programming or as a beginner to Python, identifying all the different concepts can be a tricky thing. And that is why in this video, I'm going to provide you a step-by-step -step guide of all the different concepts that you need to learn in order to understand Python and then start building projects using Python. Also, everything that I'm going to mention in this video, I've already written a blog where I've covered all of these concepts. And in my blog, you will also find all the different resources that you can follow in order to learn these concepts. So please make sure to check that blog out. I'll leave a link to that blog in the description below. As always, before I can start, if you like this video, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up. Thank you and let's begin. So before you can start learning Python, the very first question that you need to ask yourself is why do you want to learn Python? What is your end goal? What is the purpose of learning Python? Because Python as a programming language is used in so many different fields. Python is widely used for web development. Python is used in data science, machine learning, automation, game development, mobile app development and so many other fields. Now, identifying what is your field of interest is important so that you can only focus on the concepts that are widely used in your field of interest. Okay, so now that you have identified what is your field of interest, the next thing that we need to do is to learn Python. That is to learn the fundamental Python programming concepts. Now, it does not matter which field of interest you have chosen. These fundamental concepts will be used everywhere. So you need to first learn the fundamental programming concepts and only then you can learn concepts specific to each of your field. I have categorized these fundamental Python programming concepts into three sections. The first one is the Python basic concepts and then comes the core Python concepts and then finally the advanced Python concepts. Now, let's look at the different concepts covered under each of these sections. So you need to first start with Python basics and under Python basics, you need to first know what are expressions and what are operators. Under operators, there are a lot of operators. You don't need to know each and every operator, but one of the most commonly used operators such as arithmetic operators or comparison operators or assignment operators and logical operators. Once you are familiar with operators and expressions, then move on to data types. So under data types, you just focus initially on the most basic data types like strings, integers, floats and boolean. Once you are familiar with data types, then move on to variables, understand what is a variable, why do we use them, etc. Once you are familiar with variables, then move on to the flow control statements like if else statement and for loop and while loop. So once you are done with this, then move on to import statements, identify how you can use import statements, why do we use import statements. So once you are familiar with import statements, then understand what is a function, why do we use a function, how to create a function, how to call a function. So once you are familiar with functions, all also understand what is a local and global scope or basically local and global variables which can really be helpful in some uh, scenarios. Okay, so once you are familiar with Python basic concepts, the next thing that you need to learn is the core Python concepts. So under this, we first cover what are data structures, that is we, you need to learn list and dictionaries and tuples and sets. You also need to learn the different methods that are uh, provided by Python under each of these data types. So what are the methods under string? For example, the join, a split, starts with, ends with, or under list you have so many different methods like append, pop, remove, index, etc. Under dictionaries you have so many different methods like keys, values, items, get, etc. For tuples we have count and index, and then for sets we have add, copy, discard, and so many other. So all of these methods are very essential. So you need to be familiar with all of these methods because it can really help you to manipulate your data. Once you're done with data structures, move on to object-oriented programming concepts. So you need to learn what are classes, what are objects, what are different types of methods and variables within a class, what is inheritance, what is a constructor, etc. So all of these concepts are very essential and you should be familiar with this. Once you're familiar with object-oriented programming concepts, then move on to understanding how to use exception handling blocks. So how to use try and accept block to capture exceptions and how to raise exceptions. So understanding this is very important 
important. After this, you need to cover what are the different file operations, how to read data from a file and how to write data into a file. And then finally, understand how to debug a Python code. So you may have to learn the logging module in Python, which is very essential. So once you have covered the basic Python concepts and the core Python concepts, you are actually pretty good to get started with working on projects. But still, if you have the time and if you are interested in learning more advanced Python concepts, then I have listed a few advanced Python concepts. These are not all the advanced concepts. There are so many other advanced concepts as well, but these are a few of the popular concepts which you can learn and you, you may have to learn depending on what project you are working. But uh, it's not mandatory. So under this, I cover regular expressions, lambda functions, comprehensions, generators, decorators, threading and multiprocessing, and there are a few more as well. But please note that knowing all of these advanced concepts is not essential. Once you're thorough with core and basic Python programming concepts, you should be actually pretty good to focus on some specific key areas related to your field of interest. Or maybe you can straight away start building some simple projects. Okay, so now you have learned all the different fundamental Python programming concepts. So once you're familiar with these, you can now start learning some specific concepts which are related to your field of interest. So let's start with data science. So if you are interested in learning Python for data science, then along with all the different fundamental concepts that we mentioned earlier, you may also have to learn some additional concepts like you may have to learn regular expressions, web scrapping, and also how to use SQL within your Python code to work with databases. So once you have learned all of these concepts, you may also have to learn some additional Python data science libraries such as pandas, numpy, matplotlib, cborn, scipy, etc. So these are not all the different libraries available for data science, but these are the most popular ones. So if you're familiar with these uh, libraries, then I'm sure you can basically work on any data science project. Now let's move to machine learning. So for machine learning, you will definitely need everything that you learned in data science. So other all the different additional concepts and all the different libraries that we just mentioned. So other than that, for machine learning, you will also have to learn a very popular machine learning uh, library that is scikit-learn. So you will definitely need to learn this. And other than that, if you are interested in moving to deep learning uh, side of things, then you may also have to learn some additional concepts like TensorFlow, NLKT, Keras, PyTorch, Tiano, and there are a few others as well. But learning all of these uh, libraries would almost make sure that you can basically work on any data, uh, machine learning as well as deep learning projects. Now let's move to web development. So as part of web development, you will definitely need to learn how to use SQL within your Python code to work with databases. So once you're familiar with that, you will definitely need to learn some uh, web-based frameworks. So like the most popular ones are Django and Flask. Uh, you will definitely have to learn any one of them. Or there are a few other web development frameworks as well, such as Pyramid, TurboGates, Web2Py, etc. Now let's say if you're interested in automation, then you definitely have to learn some additional Python libraries like Selenium, Request, Beautiful Soup, Pandas, the OS module, as well as the JSON module. So this would be pretty useful if you're planning to use Python for building some automation scripts. And if you're interested in game development, then Pygame is a very popular Python library that you can use to build games. Finally, let's talk about mobile app development. So Python can also be used to build mobile apps, but for this, you may have to learn some frameworks which can help you to build these mobile applications. Two of the most popular mobile app frameworks are Kiwi and Beware. So you may, you may have to learn any one of them. And then you will also need to learn how to use SQL within Python to work with databases. Finally, once you have learned all of these concepts, you will need to use all of these concepts to build projects. If you don't build projects, you basically will never truly understand what is the purpose of learning so many different things. So building projects is essential and you don't really need to build a very complicated or advanced projects. You can start with the most simplest of projects and then gradually build some advanced projects uh, on the way. So you can also post all of these projects in GitHub or Kaggle and it can be a great way to showcase your skill sets to your potential employers. So please make sure that you don't just learn all of these concepts, but you also work on some projects where you will be using all of these concepts. Okay, so that's all I had to say in this video. I hope it was helpful. And if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up. Thank you and see you soon in the next one. Bye.